So what happens when you combine a terminal with an vibe coding agent with an editor? Well, you get warp code. Turns out about three years ago, I did a video on a terminal called warp. They've been at it ever since, even though I personally moved on to different terminals, but I'm checking out warp code now because I think it's really cool to see what a synergy of these three kind of different things are. Let's get right into it. So one thing that's kind of interesting is that warp and warp code are really the same thing. It's just really branding. Apparently there's something to do with like a horse in the wild west, but you know, warp code is is warp. It's just warp plus agentic coding kind of built right into the terminal. So I've installed it and I've logged in, which three years ago was this huge deal. Like you had to log in and people were freaking out. You had to log in to your terminal. I'm kind of wondering if that's still the case. People also thought that I did an ad there that was not an ad. I just liked the terminal. It's kind of later on, I started tweaking my terminal a lot more. And so I got back into kind of ghosty and iTerm because they were just kind of a little bit more amenable to that kind of tweaking. All right, so let's just try some basic terminal functionality. I'm over in a directory called YouTube videos warp code. I'm just LS, take a look around, do all that kind of stuff. Now, if I, if I go into test app, which is a Tanstack start app, we get some project functionality over here. That's kind of cool. And I can actually go and bring up a editor right in there. That's pretty nice. Pretty cool, right? But if you take a look, right down the bottom here, we got this kind of terminal and a little kind of like Star Trek logo, I guess. Maybe it's a Star Trek logo, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, the I guess the warp logo. And once we're in that mode, then we're in agentic mode. So from there, from there we can do agent mode kind of stuff. But interestingly, there is a setting. And so let's go over and take a look at the settings dialog. As you can see, by the way, I am on the free plan. This is not an ad. I don't get this for free. This is what you're going to get. In fact, I really hope that I can pull this video off in, you know, 71 things because, you know, whatever, I resets in a couple of days. So anywho, uh, okay. So if I go over here to, I think it's features. And yeah, the font size is crazy small and you can't make it bigger currently. They're working on that. Yeah, but when it comes to, okay, so when it comes to AI, it's going to do natural language detection. So let's actually turn that on. So basically, it's going to look to see if I say something in terminal mode that's more agentic in the style. So let's try that. Let's say change the home page to read hello world. Cool. Now, it actually hasn't changed into agentic mode. I guess it's just kind of in this in-between mode but it is doing agent style work. So it's actually running Claude Sonnet 4 and doing the kind of work that you would find in like a Claude code or in an open code, one of those like right here in the terminal. And as you can see, even on a free plan, it's giving you some really good access to some really primo models. So you can go over here, you can see, whoops. All right, oh, hey, cool. All right, so we've got our changes. Those actually look pretty good to me. So let's apply those. But let's take a look at the model. So we got GPT. Oh, more changes. We got GPT. We've got Claude, Opus, and Sonnet. We've even got Gemini. Nice. Okay, so now let's actually split the terminal. And then down here in terminal mode, in my new terminal, I'm going to do PMPM dev. And we can see we got hello world. Nice. So good. Okay. So one thing we want from a Claude code or VS code in agentic mode is you want them to be able to use MCP servers. So I'm going to use the slash command. Cool. And add MCP. Nice. And from here, I'm going to add the Tanstack start MCP server. So Tanstack start, PMPX, and then I'm going to have you use create start app at latest and use dash dash MCP to turn it into MCP mode. And we get our list of servers, we get our tools, list Tanstack add-ons and create Tanstack app. Nice, okay, cool. So let's go back into the warp code directory. And then from there, I'm gonna say, create a Tanstack start application that uses Tanstack form and Tanstack query. And let's see that if it actually uses that MCP server. 
All right, cool. It's called that MCP tool to get the TanStack add-ons. It's now creating the TanStack application using that tool. And now it's actually going to try and verify what was created. It's not super keen on the fact that it just created it in the current directory. And there you go. Now it gives us a nice summary of what it's created. That's really cool. Okay, what other slash commands are there? Because there's some interesting ones in here. There is init, and what init does is it's going to actually go and index through this code base and create a warp.md file that it can then use later on to help hint it as you were doing this kind of agentic work. So it'll have in it where the routes are, what kind of code base it is, all that kind of good stuff. All right, that took a little bit, but it's definitely worth it. So let's apply the changes and get that warp.md file. So it's got an architecture overview of everything. And let's actually go take a look at that file and see what it created. So if I go over here, we'll see the warp.md file. All right, it's got basically all your build commands, testing, architecture, project structure, and so on. And that's not the only thing we can do. We can also actually also see changes. So this is the current git changes in the directory. That's really nice. Now it's a little bit more agentic work. So one thing you might want to do is just ask it the questions. So in agent mode, I can say, Please go and change the home page to read Hello World. Not bad. I can also add context. For example, if I want to say I want a particular file to be worked on, then I can go and add that as context. One thing that I like to do a lot is to use an image as a prompt. So let's take this image over here. This is an image of a form. So let's go and see if we can take this form and turn it into the home page. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in here, paste an image. Could also just attach it as a file. And then I'll just tell it, turn this pasted image into a form on the home page. Coming up with a task list and a Zod schema for validation. That's really cool. Added a new checkbox type. That's really nice. Apply those changes. And I gotta say, in comparison to a straight terminal coding system, I think this actually looks a lot cleaner. So there's definitely an advantage in having full control of the terminal when you're making these kind of tools. All right, so it seems like it's done. Let's give it a go. Bring it up. And wow, actually, that's pretty spectacular. That was an image originally. Let's go take a look at the original image to see what the fidelity is. That is genuinely good. I mean, let's get real. Mostly that's Sonnet, right? But this is really cool. This is just baked into this terminal. Let's see how much I actually used on my plan. All right. So I started this video at 71. Now I'm around 86. Certainly a good way to try this out and see if you like it. Take a look at the plans. Yeah, okay. $18 a month for the pro plan. Yeah, okay. I could see that. All right, there you go. My second look at the warp terminal, my first warp look at the warp code terminal. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. Are you still freaked out by the fact that you have to log into this terminal or is this enough functionality that you think it's worth it? In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.